Welcome to my show entitled Women Influencers. I am Veronica Malolos, CCIM, founder and CEO of Capstack Commercial, a commercial real estate company serving the greater Orlando area. Today, I am interviewing Nikki Perez, founder and CEO of Authentic CRE Solutions. From a chaotic childhood to reframing her identity and finding her superpowers, Nikki is definitely someone you have to know. Please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe below. I welcome your comments and please share with someone who can benefit from this podcast. Good morning, Nikki. How are you today? Good morning, Veronica. How are you? I am great. I mean, it's starting to get too hot in Florida, but never mind. It's okay. It's better than snow. And tell us uh, where you're from, Nikki. I'm from South Florida. Uh, particularly Miami and Fort Lauderdale, correct? Yes, I actually grew up in Hialeah and I've lived in Pembroke Pines, now Sunrise, Florida by the Sawgrass Mills Mall. That's so awesome. I love, love, love South Florida. Well, let's just jump right in. So thank you for gracing our podcast today. I'm very curious as to your story. Tell us how you grew up in your environment and how you got to where you are today. Uh, so I grew up in a chaotic and hostile environment. I was often targeted, abused, you know, abandoned, you know, and, and bullied. And by the time I reached adulthood, that chaos had framed my reality, which resulted in a number of things, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, and this sort of complacency and accepting that I was to be someone else in this world. And I had no identity for a really long time. And after I had my son, I found purpose in my life for the first time. Wow, and that's I, that's awesome. Mm -hmm, yeah, and that's when the real reframing of my identity began. And my career ambitions had already begun evolving by that time. And over the last few years, I sought out strong female mentors like Beth, who taught me that my curls... <laughs> And uh, being myself are my most powerful superpowers in business and in life. So for the sake of our listeners, Beth Azor is called the canvassing queen, a common friend of both of us, and certainly a very, very big role model. So thank you for sharing that. Go ahead and continue. I just feel like, you know, where after 20 years in commercial real estate, I feel like that part of it is really where the real story of the Nikki that you see here today began. So, so tell us, you are in which industry you underwrite investment commercial real estate, correct? Correct. My background is in capital markets. So I have experience in various asset types ranging from multifamily to retail office and industrial uh, ground up construction. My soul lives in the numbers. I'm, I'm very much an Excel nerd and I love what I do. So how did you get into this industry? Funny story, 20 years ago, I started off as uh, the receptionist for a private firm. And unbeknownst to me, would I fall in love with commercial real estate? I didn't even know what commercial real estate was back then. The job was just a job. And when I went back to school, I majored in English literature and I thought, I, okay, I'll graduate, you know, get my master's, quit this job and teach poetry all day long. And uh, I just, I fell in love with commercial real estate. I, I was really proactive and inserted myself into, you know, the, the files and the processes and the meetings and went through the, the excels and the packages and really self-taught myself a lot of the beginning stages of underwriting and then over the years throughout you know really good mentorship and on-the-job experience I feel like underwriting is my thing and that's where I'm at today. Oh that's that's so cool so let me ask you was the time that you realized you loved commercial real estate just about the time when you were experiencing that whole reframing of your mind uh, to discover who you are? No, it, I, I realized that I fell in love with commercial real estate shortly after um, I started with the company in 2004. And by that time I had already enrolled in college again. And so I've had, I kind of had this like dual kind of thing going on. Well, 
uh, I'm pulling towards, you know, English literature. I love it so much, but I'm also pulling toward this. Where is my career going to go? And so I guess there was this sort of reframing then, but it wasn't a, a reframing of my confidence in my identity. It was more a reframing of my ambitions in life. Oh, very cool. That's clear dist distinction there. And I appreciate that. I wanted to ask you currently, you own your own firm and it's called Authentic CRE. So you went from the chaos to realizing you love commercial real estate to now having your own company. Tell us a little bit about that transition. So that transition is very, very much rooted, right, in the whole finding my identity. And uh, another mentor of mine, Kehlani Blackwell, she's the uh, CEO and, and co-founder of, of WIRE, Women in Real Estate. She said to me once that the cure to fear is identity. Mm. And that really stuck with me. And I find that the more authentic I am in all environments, my fears and anxieties of being overlooked and underestimated fade. And I really wanted to create a platform and a space that uh, um, supplies open dialogues about the overall commercial real estate underwriting process, because I think that there's a little bit, uh, it's nuanced, there's some, there might be some gatekeeping going on, and I really want to provide folks like me who have grown up like me or maybe not seen themselves as worthy or valuable to empower them to look at the deals with the most accuracy and strength. Wow, that's that's really, really quite amazing. I wanted to ask you, is that how you you got to the name Authentic CRE as far it as is. your company? It is 100% because, you know, when we talk about challenges, the whole, it's all rooted in fear of not feeling worthy or deserving and not being confident for me. And when I started to accept and embrace who I really am, step into who I'm meant to be and feeling confident about myself, all of my business relationships changed. And I, you know, I stepped out on my own too, forming my own company. And that's risky. That's scary, right? Oh, it's yeah. Very uncomfortable, but I felt confident enough in myself to do it. And I think that when we are confident that resonates with people, you know, whether it be a client or a colleague or someone, a family or a friend, that that confidence really sticks with people because it's, it, it comes from you. And I feel like that really frames success in business and in life. Wow. Pretty, pretty profound there. Now, you strike me as someone who's a left brain, right brain person, just like me. You have this artistic side. That's why you kind of majored in in art. So you're also a poet, right? I and am. an author. Tell us a little bit about that and how how that piece of you is important to nourish at the same time that you look at numbers and you're so good at numbers and and all of that. I actually get that question a lot because it's I think it's sometimes hard for people to reconcile, you know, being the the left right brain kind of folks that we are and the fun part for me is that my creative side gets to really come out in the underwriting oh, yeah. it's storytelling right it's it's poetry and numbers and yeah. when we're under when i'm underwriting a deal i'm able to really analyze it like how i would analyze a piece of literature right and so all like those two things coming together makes everything full circle for me. Wow, oh, that's that's pretty awesome. I love that. Poetry numbers. Wow, that's that's pretty deep right there. I love that. I wanted to ask you about a challenge that you overcame. It would be the imposter syndrome. It it it's framed my whole entire world and it's taken me a really long time to start to overcome it. And I think that that is a very difficult psychology to 100% eradicate. I don't think that I will 
it to be. To be candid, I don't think that I will ever fully overcome it, but I w- I am learning to adapt and carry it better. And it all comes from finding myself and being confident in who I am, believing in myself, believing I'm deserving, believing I'm worthy, and being authentic. Like that's it's changed everything for me. And you know, like I said, I'm an evolving person every day, like we all are. It's it's a challenge every day, but the more that I work through it, the more that those fears of not being able to be who I am fade. Do you do daily affirmations? I do. My son and I actually have one that we're doing lately together because he hates how he looks with glasses. Yeah. And that hurts my heart so much. It really bothers him. He says that he feels silly and that he doesn't like how he looks. And so, you know, we'll go to the mirror with both of our glasses on and I'll have him say things like, I look awesome with my glasses. Oh, I that's amazing. I look with my glasses. I look so <sighs> smart with my glasses. So, yeah, I mean, that's an example of what I do with my son, but I do those things for myself as well. <laughs> oh, yes, me too. Because sometimes I think when we are stepping into something that we're not sure that we can actually do it or accomplish, I think everybody experiences the imposter syndrome. And I love that you are very intentional in overcoming that. So great lesson for our uh, listeners. So let me ask you, you are very active in your community. And I'm sure that at some point, the work that you put into your community has influenced someone or a group of people. Well, tell me about that. The first incident or moment or event that comes to my mind is recent because it was so powerful for me and it it started with uh, a fellow wire member of mine uh, calling me who wanted my opinion on a deal and you know we hopped on a call for over an hour I walked her through my findings she presented those findings to her partners and they ended up being impressed and I and it was I had no intention of anything coming from this other than me helping my friend and you know no intention of influencing anything i was just trying to help and it turns out that that selfless act translated into my first client for authentic cre oh congratulations it's amazing how when we give so freely it does come back tenfold so congratulations on that i i love that story so tell me if there was one piece of advice that you would give to our audience, what would that be? Uh, My philosophy in life is it's not who we are underneath, but what we do that defines us. You know, get uncomfortable, embrace your fears, embrace who you are, be authentic. There's only one you in this world and finding your identity leads to confidence and authenticity. And I've learned that those two characteristics are fundamentally tied to success in life and in business. I love that. I love that. I really, really love that, Nikki. (laughs) So thank you. I wanted to, I think this is already the time where I get to pass the microphone on to you so that you could ask me a question. So please go ahead, Nikki. My question is for you is, what is your hope for women in business and in commercial real estate in the next 20 years? Great question. And thank you for that question. I had a chance to think about that for a few minutes. And if you can imagine me in 20 years, I'll be 81 years old. And my daughter, who is 40 years younger than me, is 41 years old because she's going to be 21 this year. And I imagine her walking into my living room, seeing how I'm doing, and me asking her, how's the hospital? And by then, she already owns the hospital or runs the hospital as CEO. And I think in 20 years, because there are so many advocates for advancing women, not just women like you and me and Beth and all of the other wonderful advocates, the men who are also advocating for women, I think that adds up to a very, very good outcome. I imagine a room of investors in commercial real estate, professionals in business who freely just 
talk to each other without any thought of equity imbalance or or any kind of uncomfortable feelings because everybody's just so used to seeing women advance in everything that they do in every male dominated industry that is my hope and you know i want to thank you nikki because you have been a big voice in advocating for women in business and commercial real estate and between you and me and beth azor and dina zimmerman and all the other women marissa limchako all the women that i've interviewed here who have intentionally advocated for women like us and everybody else to be advanced, I think a positive outcome is just around the corner. So thank you for that question. Well, I, I wanna thank you again for being my guest today. I love your story and I'm sure our listeners will love your story too. So is there uh, something that you'd like to, to tell our audience as we say goodbye? I would like to tell your audience, thank you for you, because what you're doing here is also very important and really powerful. And it gives, you know, women like me and like us to have a voice and continue, you know, speaking about our experiences and those shared experiences create a community that is really, really important. And that community is what leads to that. I feel like energy and collaboration that you're speaking of in the next 20 years. So thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you. So um, we're going to continue with our daily affirmations. And by the way, I totally appreciate the fact that you're a left brain, right brain like me. You love numbers, but you're so very artistic. And, and that is something to be very proud of. So Nikki, thank you. And I hope to see you in one of the conferences soon. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you and take care.